hello, hello, and welcome back to the Sakapanna Sutta, the questions of Saka, part two. And this is a loud reading of a talk given by the Venerable Mahasi Sayarao. And we just finished part one, finishing off with um, the notion of the horrible karmic consequences of being affected by Macharya in all its forms. So make sure to go and check out part one to this series on the Sakapanna Sutta as uh, according to this talk given by the Venerable Mahasi Sayaro. And I will be sure to put the link below to part one uh, below this video. And as I was saying, we just learned, or we just ended off um, on the notion of knowing what is uh, Macharya. And let me just read the last couple of lines from where we left off in part one. In short, Macharya is the desire to be excessively possessive, to oppose any close contact between one's cherished objects and other people, and so it is rooted in love and hatred. And with that, we're going to start part two of this series on the Sakapanha with this um, next chapter, or the title here it says desire as the cause of love and hatred but before we go on we should just get into a more proper uh, view here and so we do something like like so that would be pretty awesome it looks fine and so I can just minimize the close and minimize and let me just bow to the Buddha before we start reading Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa I pay homage to the blessed one, the worthy one, and the fully self-enlightened one. Or homage to the blessed one, the worthy one, and the rightly self-awakened one. Honor to the worthy one, and honorable one, and perfectly self-enlightened one. They are all good for use. And so, bow down again. Great respect to the Buddha. And so, we're here at the Buddha Center in the Deer Park. And we're about to continue on reading. Let me just close the chat here. I think I forgot to close these windows of the other video, so please bear with me. And the stream is going fine. We should get right into it. Okay. Part 2. The Sakapanna Sutta. And here we go. Desire as the cause of love and hatred. Let me just 
just get a little drink. Okay. Saka then asked the Buddha about the cause of love and hatred. And the Buddha said that the cause of love and hatred is desire. Here the desire the Buddha referred to referred to is not the purely wholesome desire but the desire that is associated with pleasure and craving tanha janda. Desire is of five kinds. Um, one, the insatiable desire to seek sensual objects. This is the driving force behind men's ceaseless activities until death in every existence. And two, the insatiable desire to acquire sensual objects. When one when one desire is fulfilled, there arises another desire, and so forth. And so, in this way, the accusative, accusative desire never comes to an end. No wonder that even millionaires crave for more wealth and money instead of being content with what they already have. And Okay, the stream is fine. And number three, the insatiable desire to consume various sensual objects and material goods. People who like shows, songs, and etc. never tire of enjoying them. The insatiable desire to store gold, silver, etc or to hoard money in any form to be used in case of emergency in the future. And five, the desire of some people to give money to their followers, employees, etc. These five kinds of desire give rise to love and hatred. Objects and living beings that help to fulfill the desire causes love while those that obstruct the desire cause hatred. Saka then asked the Lord about the origin of desire. The Buddha answered that desire is caused, is caused by vitaka or discursive thinking. According to the commentary vitaka means thinking and deciding this characteristic of vitakka is of two kinds. One is based on desire, while the other has its origin in belief. In other words, you think and decide when you regard a sense object as pleasant, desirable object, or when you regard or Sorry, I just got a little bit distracted. No, that's okay. Okay, so here. In other words, you think and decide when you regard a sense object as pleasant, desirable object, or when you have regard, a l or when you regard a living object as a person or a being. Thus, if you are not mindful at the moment of seeing, hearing, etc., you think and decide, and this mental act leads to craving and attachment. Then, Saka asked the Buddha about the cause, the cause of Vitaka. The Buddha replied that Vitaka is due to perception that tends to expand or diffuse papanchasanya. There are three kinds of such perception craving tanha conceit mana and belief titti and 
unmindful person falls a prey to one of these agents of expansion, he expands every sense object that he perceives and remembers because of his attachment, conceit or ego belief like a small photograph that can be enlarged. Every mental image or thought lends itself to expansion. Okay, so I can see on the video that you guys might be... <laughs> okay, let me see here. I'm just looking at the chat because some people are obviously trying to get in contact with me. Sat Nam Zaman. Excuse me, kind sir, could you tell us the way to Nibbana? Sir, we're lost. We seem to be lost lost in paradise can you help us kind sir Venner, oh sir. please don't be rude and ignore requests Simon okay okay what I think he is too what dude dude You're totally distracting my... <laughs> okay, so this is what happens when you just sit around, right? I mean, this is not my place or anything, so... These are actually people that I kind of... Uh, I've met them before. They are like... They like uh, it seems like they're about making a little bit of trouble. So this guy, this girl, a recording. Let's roll. <laughs> Do you still love us? Nice to see. We're missing the guys. Hello, can you hear me? Guys, I'm reading. Hello. You, you got to be oh, quiet. I'm, I'm reading. What What are you doing on those bikes? <laughs> oh, we, we were... Uh, well, Jai, actually, it was Jai's idea. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Simon. We were just messing around. Oh, it's okay. I just, I mean, I just had to catch up on the chat. You were talking and talking. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. do you want to listen? Because sure. I mean, you're very welcome to stay, and it's, it's not like uh, it's any secrets or anything. It's just I was alone here <laughs> when I came, and this is actually going to be part two, and I've just just started part two, so I guess I could I could start again if you guys want to listen. Okay. Guys. She she left. I'll I'll uh, I'll listen. Okay, sure, Raj. So I'm reading the Sakapanna Sutta. Um, the sutta we were kind of talking about yesterday and um, you just joined me for part two and um, if you want me to send the, the the text here yes please yep and so that's the text and then if you oh. scro scroll down you're going to be able to find the title that says the oh that that can't be right just a second one question craving yeah it, it's actually um yeah that's where i just uh, got to right now so it's about uh a third down the the, the whole text third Ch uh, ch which uh, chapter is it? Uh, it's just the uh, it's still one chapter. Yep, yeah, exactly. And so, 
So uh, you're recording this? Yeah, yeah. We're still live. <laughs> I'm just uh, taking uh, a little bit of time here. Uh, getting you have a YouTube stuff. channel? Yeah, I do. I do. Oh, wow. I want to check it out sometime. Yeah, you should. I mean, that's, that's pretty good stuff there. But um, if you don't mind, let's uh, just get right into reading and... Um, if uh, I, I hope that uh, it would be beneficial for you as well, and um, yeah, I'll, is, I'll, uh, thank you for letting me join you. Oh sure, and uh, make sure you can. I uh, love you. Out. <laughs> thank you. We just uh, we just learned or read about <laughs> desire as the cause of love and hatred, and then Saka asks, um, "Well, what is the cause of desire?" And then the Buddha explains. Um, and, and that's actually where we are now. Um, so, very welcome, Karaj, and uh, let's get right into the study, or the actual video. Okay, great. Um, Thank yeah. you. Okay, here we go. The conquest of craving, etc. At the moment of seeing, one sees only visual form, but then reflection uh, brings into play tanha, which is craving, mana and titi. Um, tanha makes it pleasant and tends to magnify it, and so do mana and titi, uh, that give rise to conceit and ego illusion, respectively. So later on, every recollection of the moment of seeing leads to thinking and decision, which in turn cause desire. Again, desire gives rise to love and hatred that makes a man a prey to envy and ill will, which bring about the frustration and suffering of mankind. And just Arash, um, this is where Saka he asks the Buddha what is the cause of all this suffering in the world. And um, yeah, so. Now we have gone all the way through to uh, the conquest of craving. Um, just to catch you up a little bit. Saka is a deva. Right? So I'm sorry. Am I allowed to talk? Yeah, sure. Saka yeah. is the king of the angels, and and so we just oh, learned yes. how he actually. Uh, uh, or we are actually going actually going to hear about how it is that he became the king of the angels, and uh, hey. all these things. So, okay, I'm going to continue on here, because the Buddha obviously would be the best one to explain all of these things. In response to the request of Sakka, the Buddha spells out the practice for conquest of craving, conceit, and ego illusion. According to the Buddha, there are two kinds of pleasant feeling and two kinds unpleasant feelings. The pleasant or unpleasant feeling that we should uh, harbor and the pleasant or unpleasant feeling that we should avoid. Then there is the neutral feeling of upeka that we have when we are neither happy nor unhappy. Upeka is also of two kinds. Upeka that we should welcome and upeka that we should avoid. Pleasant or unpleasant or neutral feeling is to be harbored if it leads to wholesome states of consciousness. It should be avoided if it leads to unwholesome states of consciousness. The commentary describes this teaching as vipassana, uh, practice on the Aryan path. The Pali text of the Buddha's teaching may be translated as follows. Sakka, I teach two kinds of pleasant feeling, Vedana. The pleasant feeling that is to be harbored when, and the pleasant feeling that is to be avoided. If you know that a pleasant feeling helps to develop wholesome states of consciousness and hamper unwholesome states of consciousness. You should not harbor such feeling. Wait a minute. OK. 
Okay, I think that was a mistake because it says if you know that a pleasant feeling helps to develop wholesome states of consciousness and hamper unwholesome states of consciousness. And then it says you should not harbor such feeling. Okay, continuing on. I would say anything that leads to wholesomeness is a goodness, right? So it might be a mistake to put in the not here. If you know that a pleasant feeling helps to develop unwholesome states of consciousness and hamper wholesome states of consciousness, you should harbor such feeling. The pleasant feeling is of two kinds. So I think the, the, uh, we've got to change that one. So if it develops unwholesome qualities, you should not harbor such a feeling. I think they got it mixed around, right? Yeah, they put the not in at the wrong line. So, but it's okay. I mean, we can figure it out. Um, hopefully, the pleasant feeling is of two kinds: one which is bound up with thinking and reflection, and the other which has nothing to do with these mental activities. Vitaka vichara. Of these two, the pleasant feeling that has nothing to do with vitaka vichara is much superior. Vitaka and vichara are translated as thought, concep thought conception and thinking, respectively, in Jnana Tiloka's Buddhist uh, dictionary. Okay. So, so much for the conquest of craving. Continuing on now with pleasant feeling and unwholesome thoughts. So, pleasant feelings can lead to unwholesome thoughts. Continuing on. <laughs> I hope my dog isn't interrupting too much. She's making a little bit of noise. Uh, it's like hard for me because like I'm still not familiar with a lot of poly terms, so I have to keep reminding myself what what they mean. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to, to get to learn some new terms. Okay, so I think uh, I'm just gonna have to just take a little pause here um, and let my dog out. Just a second, Rush. I'll be right back. Thank you, sir. Okay, so continuing on with the reading. Pleasant feeling and unwholesome thoughts. Pleasant feeling that lead to unwholesome thoughts are rooted in sensual objects. Most people are preoccupied with sensual objects such as sex and food. If they get what they want, they rejoice, but their joy leads to more desire and the so-called happiness of many people is found on desire is founded on desire if their desire is not fu uh, is not fulfilled they are frustrated and unhappy this means the emergence of unwholesome thoughts that bring into play the agents of expansion tanha mana and ditti and these uh, three, uh, Raj, we just uh, had them up here. Let me just make sure that I actually translate them. So, uh, Tanha is craving, and Mana is conceit, and Ditti is belief. So, it is craving, conceit, and belief. The pleasant feelings... Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, oh no! I was just saying, yeah. Um, it's like, uh, like sakya diti is the belief in a self, and conceit is like a ego. Uh, it's yep. not the same thing, right? Yep. 
that's right. Titi, that, that's a good one. And Tanha and Mana is, is a conceit. Gotta train these poly terms. They're very, very useful. Um, even just to know, you know, one of them is good for directing the mind. So anyway, uh, the pleasant feelings that we should avoid are mentioned in the Salayatana Vipanga Sutta which is the anal analysis of the sixth sense medium and I can definitely recommend this Sutta Salayatana Vibhanga Sutta um, to anyone interested in analyzing this body or the sixth sensing medium um, of the Majjhima Nikaya the sutta likens the sensual objects of human dwellings because they keep people in, conf in confinement. People derive pleasure from contact with them, with the senses, or from recollections of their contact. There are six kinds of pleasant feelings rooted in six sense objects and their respective sense organs. And um, yeah, if you have a question, Arash, you just uh, type it in the chat or you know uh, say something so we can hear it. That that would be fine. Oh, okay. um, thank you. Sure. Uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> continue on. If you want to read uh, a little bit, you can you can uh, just say so as well. Okay. If, if you want me to, if, do you want to take a break? Um, yeah, I mean, let me just see. So, do you know where we are in the text right now? The way to avoid pleasant but unwholesome feeling, right? That that paragraph? Yep, you can just yep. go ahead if you want to. Oh, thank you. The way to avoid pleasant but unwholesome feelings is to be mindful at the moment of seeing, etc. If sensual thoughts cause pleasure, the yogi must note and reject them. But the beginner in meditation cannot follow and note all the mental processes, so he starts with the object of contact and become, becomes aware of one of the primary elements, the uh, earth, water, heat, and wind. In Pali, Pathavi, Apo, Tejo, and Vai, Vaiyo. Yeah. I hope, yeah. I, I, hope I didn't <laughs> want you that. In Satipatthana Sutta, the Buddha says, Kachanto va gacha miti pajanati. The yogi knows that when he walks, that he walks when walking. This saying refers to clear awareness of the rigidity and motion, the bio element. But as he notes walking, the yogi is also aware of the rigidity and motion, hardness and softness, patavi element in the feet and the body also of the warmth cold and lightness tejo element of the heaviness and dampness op oppo element oppo element is intangible but can be known with other elements that are bound up with it awesome so the the wayo that is the air element and that is um that's like you you experience the air element like pressure like when you're sitting down on the chair there is pressure from the weight which comes from the apo element the heaviness and then this weight makes a pressure between the chair and our butt and this feeling is the air element of pressure the wayo element and the teju element would be of uh, the warmth or you know the, the fire element or the lack of fire and um, the earth element patawi is when something is either hard like a diamond or soft like mud like mud so the variation of either being hard or soft is how we experience the earth element and uh, I just mm. thought that would be interesting to put in there where do we if we want to kind of uh, understand these concepts I mean the different elements because in meditation we want to be aware of what category these different uh, phenomena fall into so where would we go if we wanted to get a deeper understanding of the elements um, well 
I think this, uh, you know, th the way to experience, like if you want to, how do I actually experience the earth element, right? S so you want to have a sensation and then say, this is the earth element I am experiencing, right? Mm, right. And, s and so if you imagine that you have in your left hand, you have a rock and in your right hand, you have a uh, they have some mud or maybe you have uh, what could be it could be like uh, sand and so when you mm -hmm. with your left hand when you press the stone you can feel that this the, or the rock it does not uh, bend and it does not uh, give in and so the hardness um, is caused by the earth element but the sensation of something I mean the pressure on the tip of your fingers that would actually be the air element because in science even if you hold something in your hand you don't actually touch it because there is like uh, the skin never actually touches anything it's so strange but there's air in between right. the air. They, there's so many empty space so much empty space between like atoms and yeah. It just gives the illusion of touching, but that's right. But that's, and so, uh, and so, these are some of the ways that we can think of the elements and how we actually um, experience these. Oh, Pico Jayasar has been. Maybe we are taking up his uh, space. Oh, I was just talking to. Oh, um, cancellation. No session tonight at 5 p.m. Oh, he's not doing his session. Oh, okay. So we can sit for a little while. So, yeah. Um. He, he's actually, uh, you know I go to Bhavana where, sorry, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to go <laughs> off topic. Oh. oh, yeah. He was uh, at, should at, I can... at Ban... Yeah, please uh, continue reading. But, yeah, Bansi Jaya, sir, or Bhikkhu... Uh, Jaya Sara was also at uh, the the talk the other day, but uh, yeah, let's get on with the text, not uh, get okay. too stuck into it. Right. Go ahead. The yogis at our meditation center begin with contact and motion in the abdomen that are most obvious and easy to note while sitting. The tenseness and motion in the abdomen are the marks marks of the vayu element. They practice noting in their own common language the rising and falling of the belly. This practice has helped many yogis to attain insights and make much progress on the holy path. In the beginning, the yogi constantly watches the abdominal rising and falling. He notes any mental event that occurs while engaged in such concentration. A feeling of joy may arise, but it disappears when it is noted. It usually does not intrude if the yogi keeps on watching the rising and falling. When the Buddha speaks of the unwholesome joy, it means that we should focus on Namarupa in order to head off the sensual joy, and that if such joy arises, we should not and reject it at once. Moving on to wholesome joy. Um, do you want me to keep reading, or do you? Um, let me just uh, get back into it a little bit. and. Uh, okay. We could just, uh, if I like, take the half of it, and you can finish it off. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Cool. So, wholesome joy. Uh, then there is the wholesome joy which the Buddha describes as follows in the same sutta. Having realized the impermanence and the dissolution of rupa, um, the, the body, or the, f the form, um, the yogi knows that all the rupas that he has seen before and those he is seeing are subject to anicca and dukkha. This insight knowledge causes joy and such joy may be described as the pleasant feeling rooted in liberation from sensual desire. This is a part of the teachings in the sutta. The commentary adds that the yogi is joyful because he attains insight into impermanence, etc., as a result of his mindfulness of the six sense objects. Such joy is wholesome and desirable. And we're still talking here about uh, joy 
related to the six senses and you know going beyond the the boundaries of the sensual sphere in the six senses and this can be uh, expanded upon in the Salayatana Vibhanga Sutta um, they talk about renunciation distress and the, the you know the joys that comes from being free from uh, the world and the worldly stresses okay continuing on the commentary describes four kinds of wholesome joy one the joy due to renunciation of worldly affairs okay so it comes here and two the joy associated with vipassana practice three the joy based on contemplation of the buddha etc or sakka which is Sotapana became uh, and the joy resulting from absorption in the first jhana some are joyful when they think of their renunciation of worldly affairs their ordination as bhikkhus practice of vinaya morality concentration and so forth this joy is wholesome since it is bound up with renunciation or disassociation from secular life so are the feelings of joy that we have when we hear a sermon on the Dhamma or when we go to a meditation center for practice of vipassana the joy of dependent the joy dependent on vipassana may be the joy that arises while being mindful in particular the highest joy is the joy associated with the emergence of Uddaya Paya Jnana insight into the arising and passing away of all arisen phenomena and let me just take this last one uh, the joy that we have when we contemplate the Buddha etc is obvious the commentaries say that the concentration on the joy derived from the contemplation of the Buddha of the Dhamma of the Sangha of morality of liberality and of heavenly beings such as Saka can bring about knowledge and fruition of the path even Arahantship may be attained if the yogi notes and reflects on the dissolution and cessation of joy piti that is born of the six contemplations piti implies joy and obviously the joy derived from uh, six contemplations is wholesome and so is the joy based on the three jhanas or their upachara their neighborhood jhana and the six contemplations would be the Buddha the Dhamma the Sangha uh, morality liberality and heavenly beings and that brings uh, joy um, based on the knowledge of fruition of the path and Raj would you take the, the last part here Sure, sorry, my <coughs> voice was off. Um, of the four kinds of renunciation, nakama, joining the holy order means liberation from matrimonial ties, and so does the vipassana of practice, since it is opposed to matrimony and all sensual objects. So the commentary on Itivutaka describes ordination, first jhana, nambana, vipassana, and all wholesome dhamma as nakama. The joy which is marked by vitaka vichara is of two kinds, vix happiness, sukha, that is associated with access concentration, upachara samadhi, and happiness that is associated with first jhana. Then, as mentioned before, there are various types of mundane joy is joy over one's ordination, joy that results from vipassana practice, joy of the contemplation of the Buddha. Again, we have four kinds of super mundane joy associated with the four paths of the first jhana. Superior to these 
types of joy are those that have nothing to do with vitaka vichara. These are the attributes of the second jhana that is marked by ecstasy, joy, one-pointedness of mind, ekagata, and the third jhana marked by joy and ekagata. Such jhanic joy is mundane joy. Likewise, the joy derived from the four super-mundane paths in the second and third jhana are free from vitaka vichara and therefore wholesome. The second and third jhanic joys are far higher than the first jhanic joys the joy associated with wholesome thoughts and sensual pleasure and so is the vipassana joy resulting from attentiveness into second and third jhanic joy a discussion of these joys with or without vitaka vichara is above the comprehension of those who have little knowledge of scriptures it can be understood thoroughly only by those who have attained jhanas According to the commentary, when Saka asked the Buddha how to overcome desire, conceit, and belief, tana, mana, and diti, he was asking the Lord about the Vipassana practice on the Aryan path. The Buddha stressed wholesome pleasure, wholesome displeasure, and wholesome indifference, upekka, as the remedy. It may be hard for common people to understand, but the Buddha's answer was relevant to the question. For the Deva's mind is more obvious than matter and among the elements of mind, feeling is more obvious than others. So the Buddha told Saka to watch his feelings, Vedana, in many of the Buddha's teachings on Vipassana contemplation of Rupa takes precedence over that of consciousness. This is also true of Saka Panna Sutta, but here no mention is made of Rupa since it is implicit in the contemplation of feeling. All right. That was fairly complex reading, though, uh, referring yeah. to all sorts of uh, back and forth. But uh, thank you for for going ahead. And um, what do you say, Arash? Should we take the next uh, chapter here as well? Let me just see for how long this. So I'm about uh, 43 minutes into this video. I think it would be oh, wow. cool if we just. Uh, so let's see, we pass in a contemplation. Maybe that will be a nice uh, place to start for the next video, actually, with the we pass in a contemplation. Great. You do this every night? Um, no, not every night. I just, uh, but I'm gonna be doing it for uh, the next uh, couple of nights, I think, because I found this text and we've just gone halfway through it now, almost. And then I have actually two other texts I want to go through. So if you want to, we can awesome. uh, meet again tomorrow. I think um, usually I would start maybe from three hours back from now, three to four hours back from now, um, and then read. So the last one I did oh. was just one hour and 15 minutes. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit shorter, I think. And uh, okay. and I think we should end it here just because, uh, you know, that was really, really uh, detailed, that what you just uh, read there. So if you have yeah. any questions about it, we could, we could just discuss it. Um, yeah, I mean, it is definitely pretty heavy. I'm actually... Um, I... I don't have too much experience with Vipassana, but I've been reading Yutadama's booklet, and I wanted Ooh. to practice his method. And um, I, don't, I don't know if I told you, but um, I'm actually at the on uh, end of the year. I'm moving to Bhavana, um, hopefully for about six or seven months. So I'm going to live at the monastery and and focus more on practice. And then actually, I want to go to I always make plans for stuff. I, I hope like they actually go through. But um I wanna actually go do Utadamo's course in Canada. So like but I have a lot of like preparation to it, I guess. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh yeah. Um so I'm, you're gonna be I'm trying to be a, I'm, I'm sorry. You're gonna be going to the Bawana first and then to Bhavana. Where where Bonte J uh lives okay sure that that's the closest mon monastery to to me and um i've been going there uh this past year 
and uh, so I'm going to go in January and I'm going to be a volunteer because they're on residence retreat and then I'm going to apply to be a resident and then hopefully stay longer so <laughs> that's uh, always it, cool. it's a really yeah <laughs> I mean it's a, it's a really nice place you know because it's well it's a monastery it's a Theravada forest monastery and you know it's a just it's very conducive to practice and because um, I kind of uh, I've been getting more and more serious about the practice and like uh, kind of um, because in my daily life I really don't have much time I mean I get on here I, I was at one point teaching here at the Buddha Center just teaching like basic like meditation and stuff nothing really but uh, I don't have much time for that anymore um, so uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's always good to, you know, when you have the time to actually use the time, because sometimes we find ourselves out of time, right? Which was just yes. uh, to, to kind of link it back to the text here, um, you know, the whole reason why Saka came to see the Buddha was actually because he was running out of time as well. He saw that his death was closing in, in the Deva world, um, his... Uh, garlands was becoming gray and he started sweating up in heaven that's a sign that an angel or a deva is about to die and so he thought mm. oh what am i gonna do with all of my wives and all of my things i've gotta go and ask the buddha <laughs> and so <laughs> this, that's actually He's how like, this not my sutta, wives. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's how this sutta <laughs> came about so, but if you're going uh, to be practicing uh, bawana, then that's like uh, you, that's like uh, you know, bawana is like becoming or you know, creating, putting out effort, for example, in cultivating metta <laughs> and karuna, compassion and equanimity and. Uh, and the, the yeah, that's actually states. lately. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying the force of. Oh, I, I was saying lately. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'm but, sorry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I've been uh, really focusing on meta lately. Um, I kind of have been going through a lot of like uh, stress and like stuff like that. So I'm trying to like cultivate um, just a lot of meta and and the more wholesome joys. I'm trying to like build because I'm moving to the monastery and you have to keep the precepts. I'm actually trying to keep the eight precepts in lay life, the monastery precepts. So try really trying not to, um, <laughs> it's hard. I'm, <laughs> I'm a very, uh, I'm a very, uh, uh, I guess like <laughs> hyperactive person. So like, I'm always like craving like some kind of stimulation. So it's like very hard, uh, to kind of like, not like play games and listen to music, stuff like that. But I, you know, it just, I guess it just take time, you know, to get used to it. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of preparing myself and eating less and stuff. It has a lot to do with habits um, for, mo for most of us, I think, you know, because we are used to uh, instant gratification and, and, and when we don't get it, we're like, uh, this is a kind of a strange, sta strange state of, of being that I've come into. It's just um, neutral or, you know, nothing's really happening. And so that's also why um, it's a good thing to just be locked in a room with nothing on the walls and you just have to walk back and forth in meditation or sit in meditation and you can get your food and then you're just back into the room so that's uh that's a how, good thing how, um, to, to kind of i, I don't mean to oh no, no sorry, go ahead. oh i was just uh you know, i was just saying that uh having spent like um some time uh, in the meditation center maybe you know it's it's not really not that much is going on and if, if you're uh, there to do a meditation course then you would have to keep at least the eight precepts, right? So there's no beautification, no sleeping on high beds, or you know, perfumes, watching shows, or uh, any any of those kind of no music. And so you have all you I really think have. The is perfume would be the hardest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's it's silly, you know, uh, because ultimately we're gonna lose our life, right? Like Saka, he was worried. And then we're like, but I can't let go of this nice smell, right? It's so strange. But the mind right. is just like that. And so we uh, we delve into the mind to actually see how do we relate to all of these things, like nice 
pleasant smells and sights and sounds and uh, nice feelings like love and then of course we just heard that the Buddha said there are different kinds of uh, pleasant feelings like uh, yeah uh, like a, what is it like desirable desirous love for you know lust or then there is metta as we just talked about which is co the complete opposite which is like a, a, a completely non-possessive kind of love that just wishes um, uh, for the ultimate kind of loving kindness or friendliness so it's yeah. it has nothing to do with possessing another person not even possessing oneself because that's not metta right if you send metta to yourself um, which most people in the meta, meta practice they start with themselves and their family and friends and then expand all the way out um, it has nothing to do with possessing another being it has to do with uh, just wishing for them to be well happy and peaceful and it really changes the mind even our habits like uh, our old habits of, of you know this song is good and this song is bad and this smell is nice and this smell is not nice and then we see oh I'm reacting to these things and then we learn about mm. ourselves, and, and that's the path to Nirvana so we, I remember you just asked me Simon Simon we're lost on the path <laughs> what I think <laughs> We're back on the well, path. I, I, I believe it was, it, I, I mispronounced your name when I asked. I, I said, uh, Magic Eightmon. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I have to always explain that Simon was taken, so I had to put in an eight instead of the S. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I that's think uh, I'm just going to stop the recording here, Arash. It's very nice to just uh, finish, uh, or I mean, end this video with a nice uh, chat with you and I. And thank you so much for sharing oh, um, your a little bit from your own practice. That was real cool. And I will make sure that you get the video, or I mean, I'm sorry, that you get the link to this video, so you can come and see. You could, and if share you want, you could uh, send it on. Fa you know, we're Facebook friends. Oh, are we? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll I'll make sure to do that, and uh, um, definitely I'll give you the link. But uh, let's just. Uh, I'm just gonna bow down to the Buddha here and then I will just uh, end the stream and uh, or I mean end the, the video yeah so then we can talk uh, a little bit more Arash. Great. Great. okay Namo Buddhasa and thank you so much for anyone who's watching this video and following along and make sure to check out part one and uh, follow along for part three and possibly part four as well come back and study and practice and may you be well happy and peaceful thank you sadhu 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 awesome arash sadhu sadhu sadhu